So I'm looking forward to the, my next visit, the end of May. I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah, it's coming around fast. Yes. Yeah. I I already have a question. Okay. I don't know if it's premature. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> um, so you you have a, th a theme for your for your upcoming workshops and intensives, um, and I'm not sure off the top of my head what it is, but also I'm curious about um, about the changing seasons of inner work that. Uh, maybe the focus stays with with one topic or um, in one sort of inner field that we then plow and sow seeds in for a little while or, or or how that happens so I'm curious both about what your upcoming work is and in general how we cultivate ourselves with, in this way mm, I think that's um, really a good question just um because it's been in my experience that the work does change and the depth of our exploration changes which means the nature the nature of the questions, the nature of the answers um, becomes something different I'm, I'm working on something right now Silence as prayer. Hmm. Now, I've talked a lot about silence, but exploring the nature of silence as prayer has taken me into um, talking about a deeper level of intimacy that we can have with silence. And that silence itself can feel palpable and intimate. Um, it can feel exquisite as well as um, loving and wise. But the experience of silence as prayer, what is prayer? Deep communication? Sometimes I think we think of prayer and um, so we're asking for something or we're thankful for something. Or we're praying for the up upliftment of humanity. We're praying for the um, more consciousness in our as we walk the earth, the way we, we relate to the earth. I'm in the I'm I'm in at my home in New Mexico right now and it's stark where I live. So I've been noticing that as I walk outdoors, silent in silence, that I start exploring nature in a prayerful way, intimate way, like it's my, it's my house, and I want to keep it neat and clean and, and And I'm de deeply moved by all the creatures and the plants and the sky itself. What is it saying? So prayer as intimacy. Silence as intimacy. So I've started asking people, 
how, how do you see silence as prayer? I know people have very different ways of looking at it. But respect keeps coming up. You know, the voice of the universe comes out of different people's mouths, I say. What wants to be said can come through anyone's vocal cords. So walking through the world in a more prayerful way, which means our mind is not engaged in a lot of activity. So our awareness can be open and deep. We can actually hear what people are saying. We can actually hear what we are saying. So where did that come from? I, I was sitting one day um, saying, I wanted to talk about silence because I'm going to do a satsang in about a month, a group of people. And I said, so what, what does want to be said about silence? And that's when silence as prayer surfaced. Feel that. Where does it take you? interesting that it takes me into communion and it highlights for me how um, egocentric my, my prayer and meditation normally is um, busying myself and doing an activity for <laughs> yes um, mm. cluttered And I think we're used to thinking silence, I have to get rid of all these thoughts or um, I have to be in, you know, more masterful of this mind. But if we use that focus for prayer and deep communion what happens to the mind? The mind that's used to figuring things out and putting things in boxes and repeating old information and Do we access silence if the mind is busy and loud? Well, silence actually holds that busy mind. It's a bigger space. The mind is, you know, one aspect of our energy field and it's chattering away, giving us information. But there's something much larger and deeper that holds that chattering mind. And when we focus on that, then the chattering mind can keep chattering, but we don't hear it anymore, or can recede. The larger field of awareness, the open awareness, comes forward.
or we drop into something deeper. You know, the mind, it's the reporter, figures things out, it has its function. So we don't want to make it the enemy, but it has its place. And so now we're we're shifting to a different place. Anything is possible that can make itself known when we're quiet, when we're silent. It's unique to whoever is sitting and doing the practice. What's going to arise or what's going to deepen. No matter what we're talking about when we talk about, you know, spiritual awareness, who we are as a spiritual being, basically it's the same no matter what title we give it. We're exploring who we are as the divine. We're knowing ourselves as a being. Deep realizations are surfacing. We're letting go of smaller identifications so we can know ourselves as the ultimate. So silence itself, you know, it's full of everything and it's full of nothing. It's all those paradoxes and seeming contradictions when we try to put uh, words to it. Because, I think we talked about this the last time, it's a always unfolding experience. And then it unfolds through everyone's very unique nervous system. And then their own evolution as to what it is you're going to experience. So giving up what you think it's is is a big part is a big part of it because it'll be something different each time because we're we're dealing with such an um, uh, such an intelligence When I speak of intelligence, you know, that includes everything, heart, wisdom, silence, everything. Because the universe has no beginning and ending, it holds everything, then everything can be said about it in a sense. It's not narrow. But we, we learn something, to kind of get back to your question, we learn it and we become masterful and then we open up our awareness and we learn something even broader than we learned before or deeper. Hmm. 
or we go back to something that we maybe learned 20 years ago. You have to keep giving up the attachment to it so the open awareness allows for that um, new expression to come to make itself known to you each time to actually break down a little more of that separation that you are that each time see again we keep breaking down those levels of separation So you question, I believe it's just an unending exploration. And the more you're, you're able to hold that and not need something really concrete, the more joy there is in that exploration. There are, of course, some basic things one can say to the universal teachings, but but in order to like really open up and let those teachings move you, you have to really have a much more, people, explorers need to have a much more open awareness. And that involves trust. So we seem to learn how to trust, you know, in increments. Mm. And we have experiences and we learn how to trust more. Who are we really trusting? I think that's a good question. Who are we trusting or what are we trusting? Trusting ourself? We trust the flow. We trust that we land on our feet. We trust whatever happens, we know that we are the universe. We trust that we are ultimately love. We've had a lot of experiences in our incarnations that convince us that we, we can't trust. Mm. So that's why we opening in increments. When, when you name the trust, I'm, I'm aware uh, now my resistance to being able to drop deep in meditation it, it, it does feel like I, I can't trust myself. Um, mm. the, the feeling that comes is, I can't handle this, or I won't be able to handle this. Um, so I have to uh, uh, 
sort of leave, <laughs> not not leave my body or anything, but to uh, to bob up to the surface. Whatever the this is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I've had that experience with uh, with your meditation satsangs. Uh, I've experienced that waiting for darshan from Amma, um, and then other deep experiences. How, how would you advise um, being with that that part, which uh, I don't feel an existential terror or angst. It's just it's just really difficult. It's it's uh, um, I, I I could I could coral some willpower, I suppose, to to really force myself. That's one way of going about it. Um, maybe it doesn't feel like the best way for me though, because. Uh, but eventually my willpower runs out <laughs> and maybe that's mm -hmm. okay uh, because it's incremental um, hmm. it's good to know that you run into I can't handle it now is that uh, a reoccurring experience like I can't handle life or I can't handle the world. Mm. For me, yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's what we, we, we do. We project onto the experience of deepening what we project in our, our life. I'm not safe, or a lot of people. I'm too small, or I'm not. I'm not good enough. You know, if the universe only knew what really goes on with me, I'm just not good enough. All these projections keep us from deepening. So perhaps you could see that you're just deepening into your own self, who you are as the self or who you are as a being, that it's, you're deepening into that which is already there and has always been there. So it's not something coming in It's the true ground of your being. So as you develop more trust within your own experience of yourself, your contemplative times will deepen. It can become more prayerful, more intimate. It, it sounds like this is a way to, um, to, to, to clear our experience of the world, uh, going into silence and dropping through the projection as much as we can. Um, yes. Beyond the the background story that we have for life. Yes. Mm. And so as you, you breathe with it, you use the natural mantra of the breath. You breathe with the experience. The breath itself will take you deeper. Trusting the breath of life.
You're trusting that the next breath will be there. In this moment, it feels like I have two breaths. Uh, the inner breath, which we might call the breath of life. And there's an outer breath, which is um, a little bit scared. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's more like... <laughs> So I'm, I'm just feeling and aware of the uh, sort of the two different um, presences in me at the moment. Great awareness. Now perhaps the frightened breath can drop into the inner breath and let the inner breath hold it, or let the inner breath breathe you. The inner breath will hold that which is frightened. There's that meditation of bringing your breath and God's breath or the universe's breath into one breath. It's like the yoga of bringing the two together, the union. I'm remembering an experience recently where I saw someone um, hyperventilating and it's something I've done as well um, when energetic excitation uh, hits some fear inside mm. um, and it seems how that's almost the uh, the, the ununion or, or the um, mm-hmm. the, the, the splitting um, and when that happens the breath feels scary because without consciously regulating your breath the, 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 the scared breath makes it worse it, it sort of deepens the, um, the panic mm-hmm. um, so this is I think a really helpful practice to um, uh, to be, able to, to be able to trust and to develop trust again when um, also for uh, I have friends who are asthmatic and the, the feeling of tightness means that just simple breathing is um, is hard for them sometimes um, not, not, not even when they're in a full-blown asthma attack but uh, just just to take a breath is uh, can be labored um, so that this this feels like a really good practice to um, uh, to be able to find the innate innocence and um, wholeness making and, and unioning uh, feature of, of, of breath and breathing. Mm. It's I like to call it the natural mantra. You know, mantra really means uh, mind protection. That's like a mm-hmm. definition of the, of mantra. We keep repeating something that, in fact, is expanding and healing. Um, even if we're repeating, I am that, um, meaning you are the thatness of the universe or the, the authentic. 
the breath is a bridge. It's the natural bridge that brings us from what we take in from the outside and then what we let go from the inside. It's natural. We do it all our lives. And we can we regulate our blood pressure with it. We, you know, we can use it for excitement. We can use it for relaxation. Really, is a natural, natural mantra. Connecting our mind with the breath, and our breath with our body. And when we're moving through emotion, memory, because this all comes up, when we, um, we go into these uh, meditation or contemplative places of silence, unprocessed material can come to the surface. We can get agitated. We can feel anger, we can feel terror. But having a way, something to hold on to like the breath. Okay, I have my breath, this is where I am in the moment. I am in this moment, this continuing moment. Whether you're breathing from the, internally from the central channel, Maybe, or if you're breathing, you're quite aware of your actual taking breath in and letting breath go. It will bring you back and deepen your experience. So say you're escalating into something and it's building up and you actually and start breathing and slow it down. I like to use the breath as um, a method, one of the keys. When we're chanting, we're using the breath. When we're speaking, we're using the breath. When we're doing yoga or we're running, we're, we're constantly using the breath. So at the beginning, I started talking about, you know, Silence is prayer. So what happens to the breath when we contemplate silence as prayer? For me, it's like the breath becomes um, an infinite or eternal cycle, which is in the now and kind of anchors me here. 
but in the in, in the infinite. Now see how that can be deepened. For me, it feels like I'm breathing, uh, the spaciousness that comes with the breathing, that I bring to the breathing, uh, illuminates the spaciousness around everything in my life, and then everything in my life can be um, can have prayer or, or be uh, in communion with with the divine. Does that make sense? Yes. It, it, it highlights the potential for the, the space in which communion can happen. And that, that every action is, can be a connection with the deep self. Every movement, every every um, commitment, every job um, can be used as a doorway to this depth. We don't have to wait for a particular place or time that we can continue the experience, we can continue the open awareness and the communion with every, everything we're doing. We can bring both sides of the brain into play there. When I first started this as a practice, I would, you know, clean house, dusting, dusting as a doorway to the divine, vacuuming <laughs> as a doorway to the divine. Those ancient methods. <laughs> really, washing windows, very basic thing. Very, very basic. Offer, making them an offering. Where's my mind as I'm cleaning? You lose it, flies away. Oh, I went unconscious. Okay, bring myself back to my breath. We used to call these attention exercises. Where does our attention go? Keep bringing it back. Keep bringing it back. Just another method, another way. As we're learning how to live, how to live these enlightened feelings and ideas, teachings, as we find them within our own self. As you find the spaciousness within Justin, as we engage both sides of our brain, 
the doing and the being in the walk. On the path, on the pathless path. as we're speaking and holding spaciousness at the same time, as we're having a conversation with a friend and laughing and joking around and sharing a meal, and we're holding, we're spacious at the same time. At first, it's like a jockeying position. We're over here, then we're over there. Oh, we're doing, oh, we forget to be while we're being, we're doing, oh, well, it's time to get up and go to work, so I have to get out of being, so I go into doing. We, we actually do bring these together. Hmm. So I've, I've tried many times to, to do being while doing. Mm -hmm. um, for example, at, at work, I've... Um, when I've had jobs stacking shelves, um, I might internally chant a mantra. Um, I usually don't last very long before my thoughts drift off. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious what happens if one perseveres with that. Um, what, what's the effect on one's being to... Um, um, to have a sort of a prolonged, to, to be able to uh, keep your feet in the fire, so, so to speak. Um, I, I, I find it difficult, but much easier to do this if we're set, or just, um, and, and to, to do it whilst vacuuming or <laughs> doing yeah. the dishes. Um, I find that really difficult. So is, is, it, is it a significantly different practice does it does it do something different for us or it's, how is that you just don't go so far away from it when you're using the calculator and and um, on the computer you're thinking but you're also aware of who you are as being when we, you know, different stages of development, I, I do believe it's developmental, basically. At first we go, we go to a place of bliss or um, we feel we know our beingness. And then we come back or that we become involved in our, our daily activities. And what we, the um, enlightened aspect of what we're talking about is that you know through your totality, all of you knows that you are the authentic universe. It knows it with, it just, you know that, mm. deeply. So then that, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be reading a book and taking notes and using that side of your brain for long periods of time but it doesn't take you out of the knowing who Justin is. As the deep self. I've just realized, I, I, I think when I've done, done this and, and, and tried to do mantras whilst being externally busy, um, I think I've actually just used mantras as another type of distraction rather than as a way of actually connecting inwardly. <laughs> I was cheating. <laughs> well, that, that's what we think. Well, yeah. That's 
So it's, um, it's just staying with it, actually, and exploring yourself deeply. Mm. All the, um, who you are, the truth of who you are. Keep being able to drop into that. In your way. Can I ask another question on the mantras? Yeah. Um, sorry, I use Hindu mantras, um, and you know they're they're for deities often. Um, I'm wondering now whether um, maybe that is a way of distracting myself uh, on a contemplative level, or sort of a in a mystical seeking kind of level um, it's, I, I like it, it, it works for me um, but it doesn't lead me to silence as such um, it's it, it sort of taps me into a, an image of the divine like a maybe the, the union of divine feminine and masculine of its uh, Rama and Sita or mm -hmm. um, the image of my own internal cleansing of its um, um Ganesha, Ganapati, or, or something like that. It's this doesn't feel the same as the kind of the the crucible of silence which holds the busyness. It, it feels like another kind of practice entirely. Um, well, the deities are like doorways, and they can take you in. Hmm. You can focus on the de deity. Um, Worship is, um, it's, it's, it's a path itself, it's its own path. And it can take, they will take you into what they represent within yourself. It's all you, it's in you, it is you it's already there so however you whatever you focus on is a doorway mm. say people focus on krishna because they're working on opening their heart and so that krishna will take them into their own beautiful loving heart Krishna and his flute, music of Krishna, has to have pauses of silence, or else it won't even sound like music. Mm. Yes. They're natural pauses. And Krishna himself, however you see Krishna, is the universe. Myself, I've always been drawn to Shiva. And the Saivite teachings. Has taken me into those deep experiences within my own knowing.
Now, if we hold on to the deities, that they have something that you don't, and you can't possibly get there, then that's different. But if you know that they are exemplifications of what, who we are, in our truest sense, you can use them as gateways. A teacher, a guru, is the same. Will take you into your divine self. Their gateways, doorways also. Vibrations that help us bring up our own vibration. So, you know, you can see, you can start with any subject, really, about the path and end up talking about the authentic, who we are as the authentic hmm. universe. So many words. I've tried to use quite a few words. But this, but this time, because they, you know, the words talk to different people in a different way. The ultimate surrender, the ultimate um, in-breath and out-breath to who we are, the truth of who we are. Even the body will have something to say about that. So that's why it's so good to do some body work with it. Thank you for those questions. Thank you for the space and, and for the answers and the opportunity to to explore. Um, I'm looking forward to, and also scared of uh, <laughs> the, the the intensive. Um, should be an opportunity to to explore this in a group. Um, and, and group makes for powerful work. Um, it it does. It intensifies. So it, uh, it helps the silence be louder, so to speak, in a in a good way. I like that. It helps the silence be louder. I like to work in groups um, because it pe everyone brings their questions and what wants to be said answers them. Whether it's through your own internal experience or the person sitting next to you may have an epiphany that may answer your question. I'd like to add for our viewers who may be interested in coming to an intensive, um, I'm generally scared of the idea of meditating for long periods. Um, and I was scared. I've, I've been to one full day intensive now with, with Amita. Um, and I was scared it would be torturous, but it really wasn't. Um, and I, I suspect this is because Amitar's ability to uh, help smooth the, the group experiences um, 
very finely honed. <laughs> so it's it's not like we are dumped into the deep end and then we have to sort of paddle or drown. It, it's uh, we we are held. It's it's not um uh it, it's not a raw savage experience. It's it's graceful and interconnected and um, um yeah it, it's. It's, it's, it's fine, it's, it's nice. <laughs> and, and it's about, we, the breath is there, so we're, we're held in the breath as another way to talk about it. We're held in the breath and we are the breath. So something unfolds in a very natural, innate way. It's a very natural, innate way. It's not foreign or forced. Because we're always working with the spine and the flexibility of the spine and the nervous system. So there's a lot of breath. <laughs> Yes, and the intensive is in July. No, it's in June. June for for London, and there for are London. others 13. in the states. Um, and and, and gen generally, because I'm sure this video will be around after after these intensives, um, people can go to your website to to see when you're uh, viewing satsangs and intensives. Um, Amitashakti dot com. Thank you. Yeah. And, and we'll um, be in Europe for the next one, um, uh, satsang, and then uh, intensive on the 13th of June. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Avita. Yes. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>